I had a pretty good physique as it was, even at 11, 12 years old. I was cut and I was muscular just from all the outside activity and working on the farm. And a lot of my sisters and brothers, friends just say, did your brother lift weights? And I never toyed with any weights. No one trained in my family. But I had a really good stocky physique. So I thought, wow, if I can actually make money and lift weights and develop a physique that you like, that would be the ideal. I decided at 18 I was pursuing a degree in criminal justice, I was going to college, and I stopped working the concrete, so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to dedicate myself to the gym. I joined the gym my 18th birthday, it was 1991, August 3rd. I saved up $300 and I put a membership down at Gold's Gym in Worcester, Massachusetts, and that's when I started my quest in bodybuilding, although I didn't know anything about lifting weights. I kind of sat and watched and learned, and at the time it was just magazines, so I would pick up scrap magazines at the gym and I would learn, I tried to get a lot of people to help me, but no one would really give me the attention because I was just a young kid that you know, had a decent physique, you know, athletic physique, but no one really wanted to give me the advice. So I kind of watched everyone, watched how everyone did everything wrong because that's how everyone trains at most gyms. And I was the kid that if I saw any leg equipment in there, I would do every leg machine, every chest machine, every shoulder machine. So I kind of overtrained, but at the same time, my body still responded because for the first time in my life, I wasn't doing the labor work. I was actually going to college and I was eating. I learned about nutrition. I read about a lot of stuff about it. And for me, fortunately, I linked up with a nutritionist probably six months after training uh, named Chris Aceto, who's a big dietitian for a lot of the top guys. He kind of took me under his wing and kind of wrote me on a diet and I put it on my refrigerator. That's where I really started responding, and I made some improvements so quick. Someone coaxed me into competing in a show, and the first time I got on stage, I was like, I was like, second my first show. I came to the International Body Team, I was in the show in the And uh, the story of how it started. Six months later, after placing 50 and 50 Mr. Olympia, I went to the Night of Champions, the first pro show I did, and I won my first pro show. And right then, I was like, okay, this is, this is a rod. I went to Olympia in the fall and I got eight. So I moved up half the position from the year prior. And then I went over to, uh, sat out the next year and I said, you know, I'm going to train solely for the Mr. Olympia. And I came back to Olympia and that's the first time I got second to Bobby Coleman. And that's the first time ever in my career. I realized I could actually win the Mr. Olympia competition. Like anyone never asked me, like these young kids come up to me at events and they say, I'm gonna be a Mr. Olympia. I never said that until the, I stood next to Ronnie Coleman at 2001 and I, it was a controversial second. I could have won that show and I placed second. And then I said, holy shit, I'm gonna win this contest at some point. So I said, you know, I'll come back. You know, I went to the Arnold in 2002, won my first Arnold, I was on a roll. Uh, one there, 03 and 04, which, you know, the, the same guy that wins the title necessarily doesn't win that every year. But since I was the biggest and the most muscular, you know, each year I won not only the Hummer, the Arnold Trophy, and the check for 100000 but I also won the most muscular awards too. I skipped the Olympia in 2002. I was building a house in Vegas. I moved to Las Vegas to train for the Olympia, be close to where the Olympia was. It was held every year in Vegas. And then the role started after that. 2003, I won Arnold again. Placed second in Ronnie Coleman again, 2003, which I thought I was gonna win it. He came back like a monster. No, no matter how good, in that year I was really on a roll. I had just won Arnold and I was like the new up and coming future Mr. Olympia. So that continued, 2004, same thing, going to Olympia, I thought I was gonna win, second again, you know. And then 2005, same thing, you know, second again to Ronnie Coleman, and I said, this is it, like, he's, you know, I gotta put a package together that's gonna beat this guy. So he had been coming in bigger, I came in really, like, we both came in really conditioned 2005, very similar, but he was still a little bigger than me. I said, you know what, 2006, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna just be fuller and bigger. And that's when I finally knocked him off and won the Olympian in 06. And pretty much after that, I mean, he came back in 07. He just probably flipped that year like, in 07. And then uh, 08, Olympia comes and I got second 
I lost the title to Dexter Jackson, came in a little off, and that just, you know, pissed me off to, to the max. And, uh, you know, I trained my ass off. I got a whole new revamp, the whole thing. I started working with Hani Rambot in 2009. Uh, we got a new team together. I was flying guys in and out of Vegas as training partners, and I came back and, and won the title, probably the best title I ever won, Mr. Olympia. Uh, dominating fashion came back this like raw the famous shots from 2009 where I just walked out on stage demolished everyone and then uh, again in 2010 won the next one and uh, then after that uh, I mentioned the bicep injury happened 11 three weeks prior lost title Phil Heath and uh, you know I stepped away in 12 and came back in 13 but I finished six that year Good job. Hey, go. Ooh, you're